Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and welcome to Master Leadership. Great leaders ask great questions, and this podcast takes you on a journey to master leadership with questions that matter to leaders who matter with your host, Lily Sinabria. Hi, this is Lily, and welcome to Master Leadership Through Crisis series, where we will connect with leaders worldwide to gain insights on important questions to help us navigate through rough waters. If you would like to participate as a guest, or if you have a question that you would like to ask a guest, go to masterleadership.org for more information. Today, we are speaking with Michelle Molitor. She's the founder and CEO of Nectar Consulting, Inc., and co-author of the best-selling book, Breakthrough Healing. Her unique rapid rewiring approach is a culmination of years of study in the realms of emotional intelligence, neuroscience, organizational psychology, and rapid transformational therapy. She helps catalyze shifts in thinking and eliminate mental and emotional blocks to rapidly rewire your brain for greater confidence and success. Welcome, Michelle Molitor. How are you? I'm great, Lily. Thank you so much for having me on the show. It's wonderful to be here. So we're so happy to have you on our podcast. Are you ready to pour into our listeners? Yes, always. Okay, so Michelle, tell us a bit about your path to leadership and what you're doing now. Sure. It's always a winding route, right? In my former career, I was a creative director in web development in the high-tech boom era, And that led me here to the San Francisco Bay Area in 2000. And it was kind of like Mr. Toad's Wild Ride at Disney. (laughs) Um, And I uh, ended up getting essentially bullied out of my job by two colleagues that I had hired (laughs) for my team. It was uh, quite painful. And it uh, basically shattered my confidence. And I was left standing there like, what just happened deer in the headlight. So I discovered coaching at that point to help me figure out what to do next. And in the process of being coached, discovered my real passion and purpose. So um, I went on to get trained and certified in a variety of coaching modalities and whatnot and started my own company in 2001, Nectar Consulting, because that seemed far less daunting than it was to go hand my resume to somebody. (laughs) It's so, this will be my 19th year come October. And yeah, along that path, I've always been a seeker trying to find A, how to get out of my own way and the blocks and bugs that I have in my own system, so to speak. But then how do I use that to grow and then be a better coach for others? And several years ago now, I discovered the work of Marissa Peer. She's a world-renowned therapist. And In doing some work with her, I was astounded because the methodology that she has pioneered is called Rapid Transformational Therapy, or RTT for short. And some of the stuck spots that I had been trying to remove for 20 plus years and I couldn't get out of the way were gone in a matter of weeks. And I was truly blown away. So she started training people in her modality and I've gone on to become certified and trained and been one of her graduate trainers, have worked with her and her team to develop other programs. And essentially what I've done is I've incorporated that modality into my coaching practice. And so my program is what I call my 30-day rapid rewiring breakthrough program. It's a combination of cognitive behavioral therapy, hypnotherapy, coaching, and neuro-linguistic programming all rolled up into one to help folks remove those deeply held beliefs in their subconscious that they often know that are holding them back, but they don't know exactly how to get at them or how to remove them. And they think it may take years. I mean, their experience has been, this is going to take years, it can't happen. I like this rapid transformational therapy. Tell us about Nectar Consulting. I'm curious as to how you came up with the name. Well, it actually came to me in a dream, Lily. <laughs> when I very first started exploring becoming a coach, I went to meet with a colleague who had been a business coach for many years. And after we met, I wandered into this art gallery and found this beautiful painting by the artist Daniel Merriam 
who's a watercolor artist. I'm an artist and I've done watercolor for many years. And I was stunned by the depth and the richness of his paintings. And this one called Like Honey to a Bee jumped off the wall at me and said, take me home. <laughs> it's super, super intricate. It's like a white Victorian mansion rising up in the middle of a rose bush. And it has these giant, I call them butter bees because they're butterflies with big fat bumblebee bodies. <laughs> and it's very whimsical and romantic and beautiful. And something about it just really, really spoke to me on many levels. And after claiming that painting or it claiming me, shortly thereafter, the name Nectar Consulting literally woke me up in the early morning hours. And for me, what it means is a bee goes from flower to flower to extract the nectar, the pollen, and he takes that back to the hive and creates honey, which is the food that feeds him. So it's helping people extract their essence to find their work in the world that feeds their soul, essentially. That is um, beautiful. Yeah. And now I get to do it at this richer, deeper level than I ever could before just doing regular coaching mm -hmm. because I'm able to help people access the blocks at their subconscious level and then literally rewrite them and rewire them over a 30-day period. I Part of the work is I create a customized transformation recording for them that they listen to every day for 30 minutes as they fall asleep at night. And wow. what the repetition of the positive words and behaviors and goals in a particular cadence with particular kind of music with it literally builds new neural pathways in their brain. Sometimes very quickly, sometimes over several weeks, folks experience often dramatic changes and levels of confidence, self-esteem, even physical ailments that they've been suffering from for 10, 20, 30, 40 years are mm eliminated or significantly reduced. So it's really powerful work. And all of that ties into, because I've done leadership coaching and business coaching, and I'm an executive coach in the corporate world as well. And all of this helps me connect with my clients in a deeper way to really see into them and where they're stuck and then give them insights and tools so that they can show up more effectively as a leader, as a more powerful presence in their workplace. The more you can remove your blocks, the layers, the shields that we hide behind, the more centered and grounded and calm you are. And it's that presence that I think, in my experience, makes a really powerful leader because it attracts people to you like moths to a flame. Like, I'll have what she's having. What is that? Right. right? I'm feeling that way right now. Yeah. <laughs> what is she having? <laughs> um, I wrote down three things. I wrote down, this sounds like very nourishing, very nurturing, and very needed work. Yes. So how can um, we connect with you? Well, you can always find me at nectarconsulting.com, N-E-C-T-A-R consulting.com. I've got lots of great information and free stuff in the brain candy section on my website free ebooks with transformation recordings and guided meditations and whatnot. But if you want to talk to me, we can schedule a 30 minute complimentary discovery session there, but also Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram and Twitter, you know, all the regular places to under work. Nectar Consulting, Nectar Consulting, Rapid Rewire, Rewire for Success, Michelle Molitor, pick one, anyone, you'll find me there. All right, fantastic. Now, at the time of this interview, we are hopefully at the tail end of the COVID-19 pandemic. And with the work that you do, I imagine that there will be an uptick where there has been an uptick because there's a, a lot of things that people are going through. This has stirred a lot of things in their hearts. So tell me a little bit about how this has affected you, your organization, your family. It's funny because I work from home by myself all day, every day. So it's like, oh, okay, it's no big difference. But I, I can't go to the gym. I can't hug my friends, which is like, oh, I need my people. But my family is all well. I'm very fortunate that they're all very healthy. Um, we're scattered about the country. But, you know, in my work early on when this happened, I'm very empathic and I feel a lot. And so I actually created a masterclass called Conquering Fear and Anxiety in Uncertain Times. 
which I've given several times now. And mm -hmm. there's an ebook and a transformation recording on how to lower your anxiety. And it's all free. I'm happy to share the link with you, Lily, and you can share it with your listeners if you'd like. But it's a, yes, of course. It's a wonderful resource for folks to really just like, okay, how do I take my power back from Amy? Mm -hmm. Amy's your amygdala. And your amygdala is that part of your brain that's your fight or flight mechanism that just wants to keep you safe, right? But sometimes she overreacts or holds on to that belief for far too long when it no longer serves us. And so mm -hmm. Amy can get up in arms to try and protect you from everything. And so in the masterclass, there's a lot of tools that I share with folks. So I'm just like, how do you recenter and breathe and just find that state of calm so your whole body system isn't like in this constant state of high adrenaline? I really geek out on the neuroscience of my work, Lily. And so I really take a very holistic approach to it. And like, what is your brain doing? And what are the chemicals that are happening? And how is your body responding? And how is it feeling? And just tuning into your body because we tend to operate from the head up. 90% of the time, I think. So getting people to remember to listen to their bodies and be mindful of what it's asking of them mm -hmm. so that they can pause and breathe and like, oh, okay, let me just <sighs> calm things down. Because ultimately the whole idea is to feel good, to do what you love and love what you do and hopefully get paid well to do it, right? So we can live the life that enables us to be of greater service to others and to the world and bring mm -hmm. our gifts to the world. There's so much value in what you bring to the world. And I love how you've equipped yourself, right? Even with the neuroscience geekiness or nerdiness, I think it's intriguing as well. But I love that because you've equipped yourself well so that you can equip others. Like that bee you were talking about, getting that nectar. It's like poetry. Yeah. This is my poetry here. Okay, this is great. Hey, leaders, stay tuned for the rest of the interview following this brief message. If you want to find, claim, develop, and expand your voice in order to land that job, those clients, or that partner, then Master Your Swag podcast is for you. You don't have to have expert credentials to be featured, and you can select from several plans that can perfectly match your needs. Go to MasterYourSwag.com and claim your spot as a guest, and be ready to get noticed. That's MasterYourSwag.com. All right, so Michelle, tell us about either a quote or advice that has helped you most through crisis. One of the most powerful things that I've learned through my path, probably two things. Our greatest source of pain is our greatest source of power, right? So when you can take the most painful experiences you've lived through and find the lesson in it, then you can turn it around and give it to other people, right? You know, me feeling like I was kicked off the dot-com train, <laughs> right? And my confidence was shattered and, and my self-esteem was pretty destroyed for a while. That has really fueled my passion as a coach to help other people reclaim their confidence, to take back their power from their fears. Our mind is a very powerful place and it can work for you or against you, right? So you have to learn how to tell it what you want it to do for you, to have it work for you. The other thing that was very eye-opening for me that I think truly has changed my life is realizing that I had this lurking in the background for probably most of my life, a belief that I wasn't enough. Very simply, that I wasn't enough. I wasn't good enough. I wasn't something enough. And I was always trying to prove myself in different ways, shapes, and forms to my family, to my bosses, to whomever. And it's a very, very common theme song, right? And the more I shifted that conversation, I am enough. I've always been enough. Of course I'm enough. Why would I not be enough? Whoever told me that I wasn't enough, right? It was a decision that I made about myself based on the circumstances of my life, right? And so when you turn that around and you can start to believe it at a deeper and deeper and deeper level, then it unfolds and unlocks parts of you that 
you didn't even know you were capable of. And so for everyone who's listening, I would say, if nothing else, just write that down. I am enough. Write it on your mirror, put it on your phone, put sticky notes around your house. I'm lovable. I'm worthy. I'm deserving of success. I'm deserving of abundance. Whatever that thought is, that reoccurring thought that takes you down the rabbit hole, flip it. Put the opposite of that up and remind yourself, no, this is possible to access these things because the more you tell yourself something, the more true it becomes for you, good or bad, right? Your mind just takes in information. It doesn't discern. Your subconscious doesn't discern. It just takes it all in. So start telling yourself the things that you want to believe versus the things you don't want to believe. Right. And I worked in education for over 25 years, and this is very prevalent in the organizations that I've been a part of. And you're spinning your wheel, you're on that treadmill, you're that hamster, you become that. You didn't start off that way. And then it's proving your worth. It's, you're trying to prove your worth, your value, your position to everybody else. But it's cultural. That kind of mentality is really, unfortunately, from the leadership. And yeah. unless we're aware and stop that, it continues. Yeah, absolutely. I worked for about 11 years for a, a program called California Gear Up, which is a federally funded program that provides coaching and leadership development to educators in low-income middle schools all over the state of California. And I was astounded at the mindsets and the scarcity mindsets and the constant struggle mindset that most educators have. And it Part of it's, it's not their fault necessarily. It's a very institutionalized mentality. And, you know, we were able to chip Good. away at it a little bit, but. <laughs> That's what we're doing here, Michelle. Yeah. We keep having conversations and maybe someone will listen and say, hey, I am enough. Hey, I've been doing that. And, you know, just start to kind of wake up and do something about it. You yeah. Know? People are operating from their current space of awareness until they wake up. So I love, love, love the work that you're doing. Thank you. I do too. <laughs> yes, yes. It's it fills so my heart and uh, gives me so much joy to watch people really step more fully into themselves and have these ahas. And, you know, I had a client that I worked with who was a very high achiever. He had built a multi-million dollar company by the time he was 27 but it nearly killed him because he burned out his adrenals, mm -hmm. right? And his company imploded and he couldn't work for nearly two and a half years. And I met him on a podcast, actually his podcast, and we ended up doing some work together for about 90 days. And we were able to get at the root of this belief about himself that came out of the physical and emotional abuse that he'd suffered as a kid, mm. right? Like I just, he always used to say, I'm going to crush it. I'm like, actually, you don't need to, right? Mm -hmm. And shifting those beliefs enabled him to operate differently. And he's also one of those guys who tracks everything, you know, he's really meticulous about improving his health because it had been really, really, really bad. And inside of 90 days, the blood work showed us how significant his health had improved in a short period of time versus the two and a half years of working with medical doctors. So, you know, there's place for all things. Right. And our mind is a powerful place. So when we can just even start to notice the limiting beliefs that play on repeat in our mind, right? And just writing them down like, wow, okay, what is the negative conversation I keep having with myself? Right. Mm -hmm. And then flipping it, like what's the exact opposite of that? And noticing how does it feel to think the negative thought versus how does it feel to think the positive thought? And then you can choose, right? Chocolate, vanilla, choose. Which one feels oh my better? God. Did you do Landmark? Yes. <laughs> I love that. Chocolate, vanilla, choose. <laughs> yes. I love that exercise. Yes, that's perfect. Just speaking my language. Thank yes. you. So, Michelle, many use the term lifelong learner. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you and what are you learning right now? Lifelong learner is just constantly feeding your brain, right? Neuroplasticity tells us that you can always learn more. You can heal your brain. You can change your brain. 
a few months ago finished reading a book called The Brain That Changes Itself. It's all about neuroplasticity. It's super geeky, super fun, but it's astounding at how we can heal our body, mind, and spirit if we really put our attention to it. I just started reading another book last weekend called Perfect Love, Imperfect Relationships. And it's really about getting at those core wounds that we all have in some way, shape, or form that continue to raise their ugly little head, right? Mm -hmm. And get in our way and have us close because when we're closed, we're guarded. We have our shields up. We're not open to receiving the amazing beauty and power and miracles that are all around us. It's like we have these blinders on and the good stuff's just right over here on the other side, right? right? So right. when we're able to take off the blinders and sometimes it's little piece by little piece by little piece. You know, my work has shown me that we all have woundings right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they impact us in different ways. And we think, oh, we've stuffed it away. It's nicely tucked away in that closet in the back, right? But then somebody can say something or do something or we smell something or we see something and it triggers, triggers. that. And you're like, <laughs> and you're like, whoa, where did that come from? Right? Mm -hmm. And so it's just a constant learning of, okay, let me let go of that. And let me let go mm -hmm. of that. And then what do I want to replace it with? When I want to fill that space with now that is available to me, that allows me to love myself, to be greater love and of service to the world. Because I truly believe that the more we let go of the junk in our trunk, right? We no longer mm -hmm. need to carry, then there's more space for us to expand in our energy and in our mindsets and our capacity to be leaders and to be a radiant heart, a shining light, for others to go, wow, what is she doing? And how do I get there? Because that feels good. I mean, it all comes back to how we feel about things in our body and enabling us to then move forward more powerfully. Right. And when you let go of that negativity is when you're able to see. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for that. Now, Michelle, when you think of leadership today, what most concerns you and what are you most hopeful about? In certain arenas, I see a lot of dysfunction. I see a lot of lack of connection. I see a lot of guarded, shielded people mm -hmm. with their hearts closed. And that leads to assumptions and make wrong and judgments and unnecessary criticism i don't mm -hmm. there's so many words to choose from none of them are coming to mind but mm -hmm. conflict that, disconnection and lack of love yes mm -hmm. yes disconnection probably you know and it feels like the barriers have gotten thicker instead of them coming down and that makes me deeply sad to see that yeah. um, and what are you most hopeful about that we are resilient human beings the planet is a resilient place and that I think as more truth is revealed, both good and bad, that our generations that are coming up have a very different perspective mm -hmm. and they're really standing up for what they believe and are moving forward in ways that our generation perhaps haven't done as well in some way, shapes or forms. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I believe in the power of people's goodness and their hearts and leading from that place. And there's some amazing people on the planet who are working towards creating that greater transformation. Thank you. So here's a question from David Burkis. What have you changed your mind about? I have changed my mind knowing that my mind can change. Ooh. Is that a quote, Michelle? Well, it is now. It is now. <laughs> I love that. I don't know what I just said, but write it down <laughs> quick. <laughs> I have changed my mind knowing that I, my mind can change. Yes. What I've learned more and more about our brains and neuroplasticity is that I don't believe your brain is just this way and I can't be fixed. Right. Yes, you can. It takes some doing. 
and it takes tenacity and it takes practice. I've read so many stories and I've witnessed transformations in people who've had chronic depression, chronic migraines, IBS, adrenal fatigue, psoriasis, arthritis, all sorts of physical ailments in their body that they've been dealing with for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. And they've been able to just turn it off. Mm. You just turn it off. That's awesome. Right? Mm -hmm. Because when you change your mind about yourself and how you want to show up in the world, your body listens. You have to command, direct, instruct your mind to do what you want it to do. And it takes repetition and it takes practice, but I believe all things are possible. Yes. And I love that quote, Michelle. I will use it. So as a listener of this podcast, what is a question that you would like a future leadership guest to respond to? Ah, okay. I see how this game is. What is the belief that you need to change within yourself in order to have a more positive presence for others? I will ask a future guest. So you wrote a book, Michelle. Yes, it's called Breakthrough Healing. I co-authored it with six other authors and it talks about different healing modalities outside of big pharma, different ways that you can tap into your body, to your mind, your spirit to create positive change and to heal different aspects of yourself. You can go to Amazon and find it. Okay. All the proceeds go to the children's hospital. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. All right. So is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners? The fun thing is come join me on Facebook. I have a group called Rewire for Success. It's a free group. It's a public group. There's nearly 700 of us in there now. Come join the party. And I share tools and techniques and insights and inspirations with folks to help them rewire their thinking for greater success. And there's a place for them to share their talents and gifts and wisdom and build a beautiful community. So I'd love to invite them in and come and sit and have a cup of tea and stay a while. Well, thank you for that invitation. I want to also thank you for adding value to me and to our listeners. Oh, my sincere pleasure, Lily. It's been a real joy to be here with you today. Same here. Have a fantastic day. Yes, thank you. Enjoy this lovely, lovely day. In closing, here's a quick message. Coaching is the art of influence that underpins leadership in the 21st century. It is the very thing that can get you from being stuck to being extraordinary. So go to masterleadership.org and sign up to get a free coaching session. Until next time, continue to ignite that leader in you.